It was hard to know who was more crazy. Me or everyone else. And here they come again, warming their way into the black matter of my brain. I told myself, they cannot touch me. They are long dead. Ah! Wait, what? What? Dude, you know what I'm doing. I'm filming an intro for the video. What? You, dude, I, I'm, no, it's, it's only, do I really need to go to the store right now? Seriously? All right, fine, I'll go to the store. Fine, I'll go to, the, I'll go shopping, whatever. Checklist games, you know the ones, they're the open world games that are checklists. Your Assassin's Creed's, your Far Cry's, your Watch Dogs, yeah. And now that I think about it, those are all just Ubisoft games, but, but you get my point. <laughs> it's the style of open world game that Ubisoft pioneered. The kind of game that 10 years ago we thought was the most crazy, mind-blowing open world design, but nowadays is a little bit old, a little bit tiresome, a little bit derivative. These open world games are nothing more than glorified shopping lists, right? Go here, do the thing, get stronger, go here, do the thing, get stronger over and over again. And you know what? They work, they serve their purpose, and a lot of people really like this style of game. For instance, my editor Dexter really likes this style of game. I, unfortunately, am not as keen on this style as many other people. However, there is one exception to this rule, one big exception that offers nothing else beyond the shopping list style of gameplay. But as time went on and I thought more and more about this game, I got really nervous to revisit it. I thought that if I revisited it, I, I would hate it. So I did just that. You know what? This game still fucking slaps, dude. The 2015 Mad Max game came out at a very weird time. It was competing against some of the biggest open world games of all time, like The Witcher 3 and Fallout 4. Like 2015 was a massive year for video games and the Mad Max game kind of just got swept under the rug when it came out. But I am here to staunchly defend it because it's super fucking good still. <laughs> Look, it isn't gonna blow your mind. It's not some underrated masterpiece that no one has played in 15 years. It's got fans and it's got people who think it's a little bit boring and both sides are completely understandable. But I'm here to tell you that it fucking eats nails for breakfast without any milk. It is awesome. It's Mad Max. Do you want gnarly cars? You got them. Do you want fast paced action? You got it. You want weird phallic named enemies? You got them. You want an Australian desert? Fuck yeah, you got it. This game is as Mad Max as Mad Max can get, all right? But let's get a few things out of the way first. Look, this game does have some faults, right? It's not perfect, no game is perfect, but I'm just like confused as to why this game has flown under so many players' radars when it's super good. But let's get some of the things that it doesn't do as well out of the way first, primarily its story. Uh, I guess I should say lack of story. There's not much of a story in this game. Oh, hi, Peach. <laughs> Look, I understand if a game having little to no story is a turn away from you. I'm a person who primarily plays games because of narrative. And even though Mad Max doesn't have one, it still keeps me captivated. But we should at least go over what it pretends to have. So this game takes place before the events of Fury Road. Max is trying to reach a place known as the Plains of Silence. While on his way to do this, his car is taken and destroyed by Scabrous Scrotus. Sorry, Lord Scabrous Scrotus, son of Immortan Joe and brother of Rictus Erectus. And if you are new to the Mad Max world, yes, these are real names. There is also Humongous, uh, real characters, real names. <laughs> but since Lord Scrotum, I mean Scrotus, has broken Max's car, he needs to build a new one. So he teams up with Chum Bucket the Blackfinger to build a new car to get them to Gas Town so that they can reach the Plains of Silence. Along the way, there are Mad Max characters, there's a lot of deserts and sandstorms, and that's the story. That's it. You build a car and you go, and while that's not a lot of story, 
the thing is, is Mad Max has never really had a lot of story. There's always a lot of world building, but there's a lot of world building in the game as well. But in terms of narrative on display, there isn't always that much. There's a lot of crazy characters, a lot of set pieces, but the narratives are fairly simple. When you look at Fury Road, the story literally just breaks down to characters go from point A to point B, and then from point B to point A, and it's still my favorite movie from the 2010s, like that entire decade. It's, it's fantastic. So I give that a bit of a pass. You're not coming to this game for the story, right? It's a Mad Max game. So you're coming here for the cars. <laughs> Mad Max is about cars. And over the course of this game, you get to create your own magnum opus. Literally, that's the name of the car you build. This is a car capable of handling the unrelenting dangers of the desert and the war gangs going on. And God damn it, guys, these cars are fucking awesome. The sense of progression you feel watching your car blow up and then getting this bodiless frame and it goes like two miles an hour but then you end the game with this fucking rocket harpoon nox boosted spike covered speed machine it's unmatched it is such a nice smooth fun sense of progression the cars here are fucking awesome and specifically one attribute about the cars are super good the speed the speed guys god okay so i'm not a developer right so i don't know the black magic that's going on behind the scenes to make these cars feel as viciously fast as they do but these are some of the fastest most like intense cars I have ever driven in a game. I don't play a lot of racing games. I see a lot of like the speed elements, the way they trick you into feeling speed. But in Mad Max, the deserts are these open, gorgeous plains and you are just It's awesome. <laughs> so scattered throughout the maps are these convoy routes that Scrotus's scouts will patrol. And one of the many tasks that you can check off of your checklist in this game is taking on these convoys and destroying them. And hot giggity god damn y'all. These convoy chases feel like you're playing Fury Road, which I would hope so because this is a Mad Max game. But the speed at which you're chasing these convoys, right? The amount of cars on patrol. Sometimes you're fighting upwards of like 10 cars on this one road and they're all violently swerving to try to knock you off the road. You're trying to knock and break so that they're swerving into each other. You've got a harpoon and you're ripping the doors off of their cars. You're blowing up their gas tanks so their cars explode into a violent cloud, sending them to the hole land of Valhalla. You've got harpoons that can rip off the tires of the cars, causing them to spin out of control on the road. And the whole time, you're just barreling towards the first car of the convoy. You're trying to beat the first car of the convoy. These fights are fucking incredible. And it is all thanks to an impeccable sense of speed and a very, very tight driving combat mix that this game is able to pull off because it's Mad Max. You should be able to fight in these cars. That's what it's about. You should be slamming into people and blowing shit up and chasing people down. And it is so, so good. And this game is just easy and fun to pick up and play. I have almost 70 hours in this game. Over the past couple of weeks, I've put like 25 hours into it, and a majority of that time has been spent on my Steam Deck. It is a fantastic Steam Deck game. It runs at a flawless, rock-solid 60 FPS, and it's just super fun. It's a game you kind of want to play with a controller anyway, because it's hard to steer the cars with a mouse and keyboard, and it's also got like the Arkham Free Flow style of combat, which just feels a little bit better to play on on controller so it is the perfect steam deck game it is fantastic and look i said this earlier but fury road is my favorite movie from the previous decade in terms of what a film can do perfectly mad max fury road does everything flawlessly and that is why i am so surprised that this game has flown under people's radars for almost a decade now what? No, no, that no, that can't be right. No, because no, 2015 was no, it was only it was only three years ago. No, it wasn't eight years ago. 
No, because that means Fury Road is eight years old. No, that means The Witcher 3 is eight years old. No, stop, stop. 2015 was not eight years ago, stop it. I am shocked that this game has flown under people's radars because what this game excels at is being a Mad Max game. And that might sound like a hollow compliment, but it's not. I promise. In the 40 some years that the Evil Dead franchise has been around, we have gotten five different Evil Dead games. But in that same span of time, we have only gotten one other Mad Max game, and it was from 1990 for the NES. And it followed the original storyline from Mad Max. So it wasn't even like Road Warrior or Thunderdome. It was the original plot. That's not very fun. <laughs> For all intents and purposes, this is the only Mad Max game we have, and a lot of other licensed tie-in games can kind of crumble under the weight of the IP that they've been given to make, but Avalanche Studios knew exactly what kind of game they wanted to make, and they fucking crushed it. Avalanche Studios wanted to make an open world Mad Max game with insane kick-ass cars, crazy Mad Max set pieces, wild fucking characters with phallic names, and this Aussie who doesn't take anyone's shit. It is awesome and I truly think that they nailed exactly what they were intending to make. It feels like these developers were given the opportunity to make a Mad Max game and they just did exactly what they wanted to. They trimmed away the fat. They didn't try to like make this grand, grand thing. They knew Mad Max was intense action, crazy deserts and wild ass cars. And that's what they gave us. And they did it so well. This world feels Mad Max. Chumbucket, the character that sits in the back of your car and runs the harpoon for the whole game feels right at home with all of the other crazy ass wild Mad Max characters. The fortresses and the hideouts that you get to like slowly build and buff over the course of your game feel like they've been scraped straight out of the Mad Max movies. I mean, this this game takes place before the events of Fury Road. So you've got like the war boys, Morton Joe insignias everywhere. You're fighting the war boys. They've got like the weird harpoon like trapeze thingies and all of the cars like it feels Mad Max from the tiny ass little dinky rink dune buggy you can have to the giant massive tankified pickups you can drive this game feels so Mad Max the reason I love this game despite my hesitation with open world checklist style games is because this game has passion behind it this game doesn't feel phoned in. This game feels like these developers got the opportunity to make a Mad Max game and they understood the assignment perfectly. They dedicated all their time and resources on what mattered in a Mad Max game. Crazy cars, giant explosions, wild ass combat, fucking wicked stupid characters, brutal, Australian chaos, and I love it. We need more games that are designed just to be fun. And that's what this game is, and that is what impressed me most when I revisited it, is that I haven't played this game in years, and it is still really fucking fun. So if you like the Mad Max world, or you're interested in the car combat, or anything that I've said today has at all been intriguing, I highly, highly recommend it. It is a dirt cheap game on Steam now, and it is just a blast, and there is so much to do, and it is, it's just really good. Don't you think, don't you think, Cuthulhu? Wasn't this just the coolest game? No, what I did at the beginning of the video was not embarrassing. I, no, I know I'm not as handsome as Tom Cardi. Look, okay, I just, okay, shut the fuck up.